and this is exactly what I'm teaching in my Calculus 1 class. So let's go over this. We are going to find an antiderivative for 1 over 2x, and that's pretty much the same as finding the indefinite integral of 1 over 2x. And we also have the condition that x is greater than 0. And the original post is asking that it seems that there are two answers, uh, which one's correct. So let me show you guys both solutions, and then I will explain why they're actually both okay to be the answer for this integral. So check this out. Firstly, there is a formula in the book that says the following. If we have ax plus b being positive, then if you want to find the indefinite integral of 1 over ax plus b dx, this right here equals 1 over a times the natural log, which is log base e, of ax plus b. And notice here, I'm not using an absolute value because we already have that this right here is greater than zero, so we are good. And of course, last e right here, don't forget the plus c, so that's the formula. And here's a small touch. In order for this formula to be true, we also need to make sure that a cannot be equal to zero, right? So from here, we can see that the integral of 1 over 2x dx a is the 2, x is x, b is 0, 1 is 1, integral is integral, dx is dx. So we can apply this formula. We will just get 1 over 2 times ln of the input, which is just the 2x, parentheses 2x, because we have x is greater than 0, so this is positive. And that's the first answer that we have if we use the formula. However, you know, if you check the answer key, maybe just in the back of the book, the answer key says that if you have the integral of 1 over 2x dx, this right here, it's really just 1 over 2 ln x, just x inside of the ln, and then plus c. Hmm. So if you take a look, where did the 2 go? So of course, they look different. Uh, which one's correct? Well, before I show you guys, well, I'll tell you guys that they are both okay to be the answer. But before I explain it, I would like to explain that how they got this and how they got that. Let's do the easy one first. And this is the one that you should do, okay? To integrate this, we have a 1 over 2. It's just a constant multiple. You can put that outside of the integral. So we can look at this as 1 over 2 times the integral of 1 over x dx. And then, maintain the 1 half, and you ask yourself, the root of what will give you 1 over x? And the answer for that is natural log of x. So ln x. And then you are done. So this is how you get the answer in the back of the book, from the answer key, like that. Alright, now, let me explain that, why this formula is the way, like this. It's, maybe this formula is wrong. No, it's not. Check this out. Start with the u substitution, let u equal to the denominator. So we have u equal ax plus b, and then differentiate both sides. du is equal to the derivative of ax plus b. a is just a constant, so we just have a, and then we have the dx. Then I want to get the dx by itself, so let's divide a on both sides. So dx equals du over a. Then take this integral to the u world, the happiest place for integrations. Integral 1 over the denominator, which is the u. So 1 over u. dx is du over a. Now check this out. We have the 1 over a. It's just a constant multiple. We can just put that outside of the integral. And then focus on integrating 1 over u du. This is 1 over a, and integrating 1 over u, we get ln L of u, and u is just ax plus b. And assuming that being positive, we just need a parenthesis right here. And after that, put on plus c. So this is the correct formula, so it's legitimate. Applying this formula, you will get that. Right? So now, let's explain why they are actually both okay. The key right here is the constant here. 
these two constants are different, right? The function part, if you differentiate that, if you differentiate that, you end up with the same derivative, but just different constants. Check this out. I'm going to start with this right here. We have one half ln of 2x and then plus c. I'm going to call this c1, like my first constant. Here we go. This is 2 times x. Inside of the ln, what can we do? We can break it apart by using the natural log property. So let's maintain the 1 half. And then this right here becomes ln2 plus ln x. When you add the ln, you can just multiply the insides. Well, you can also expand it just like that. And then maintain the plus c1. Distribute the 1 half. We are looking at 1 half ln2 plus 1 half lnx and then plus c1. Now, this thing, 1 half ln2 is just a constant. So I'll just write that down. This is just a constant. So is this. c1 is meant to be a constant. And then the truth is, when you have a constant plus another constant, the result is just another constant. Imagine you are helping your little brother with math homework. They are asking you, what's 5 plus 8? And then just put down it's a constant and then be happy. Same thing. Anyway though, we can kind of merge these two constants together and then call it something else. So I'm just going to put this down right here, 1 half ln x. And then this and that, we use c1 already. So why don't we call that plus c2? So in fact, they are both OK. It's just that this is a constant and this is a different constant. So hopefully this right here helps, especially when you do integrations. This kind of things will happen quite a lot if you do trick, trick integrals. If you guys need, help, need more help with calculus, I have more calculus tutorial right here for you guys. So check them out. That's it.